Rick Croslin here with another DIY total solar eclipse project. When you talk about the solar eclipse, you have to learn a little bit about the scale, the scale of the sun, the moon, and the earth. And it's hard to get your mind around it. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Here is, if this is our sun, and this is my sun rug, and this rug is about, oh, about six feet in diameter. And if that is the sun, this marble right here represents the earth. Now that's pretty amazing that you would see this earth next to the sun. But that is exactly the scale of the sun. This is the earth, here is the moon. These are the correct scale. This is about one fourth the diameter of this earth. But we still have to figure out how far apart are they? Because it's the sun's shadow, as you see right there, on the earth that makes the eclipse. So to do this, I'm gonna set this down on the ground right about here. And this is still not far enough. It's farther away, farther away. In fact, it is about nine and a half circumferences around which puts the moon about this far. So as the moon is revolving around, if I don't hit this bus, <laughs> as it moves around the earth, you can see that it is a pretty good distance. And it's because of this, check it out, that we have to line up the sun moon and earth and that is a very 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 far distance but it's the correct size of the earth moon and distance the only thing that's left out of this picture if you remember the rug outside that was a six foot rug for a small marble the sun if i use these two things to scale i'd have to have a rug that was 13 and a half feet in diameter. The sun is massive. I hate to tell you this, but any picture you've ever seen in a book or on a computer screen that shows the sun, the moon, and the earth, and the planets together is incorrect. You cannot fit that onto a screen. You'd have to use a microscope to be able to see the planets. I'll show you what I mean. You'll be, you'll, this will become apparent when you make your own DIY Earth Moon model. So, if this is going to be the Earth, a ping pong ball, which is an inch and a half in diameter, I've selected a bead that is three eighths of an inch. This is the correct scale of the Earth to the Moon, about one fourth. Now we have to figure out at this scale how far apart they would be. And it turns out if you multiply this diameter times the circumference, the 9.5 times the circumference of this object, you get a length of 42 and 3 quarters inches. So let's make one. I got my bead here. Those two are given, 3 eighths, an inch and a half. But I'm going to have to measure out 9 and a half times the circumference, about right about there. I'm going to cut that off and that should give me my 42 and 3 quarters inch piece of string, which is, now, for some of you, you'll remember that the moon is not a perfect circle, it's an ellipse, so sometimes it's closer and sometimes it's farther apart. So we have the perigee and the apogee. When they're close, it's the perigee. So for our purposes, we're going to go with the 42 and three quarters. And I'm gonna give you a small piece of tape and I'm gonna put this small piece of tape right here on my earth here and get my bead. You have here now ready to demonstrate to others the earth. Now, if you take a look at that, look how small that is out in space. That's why it's so rare to have this solar eclipse that the sun, the earth, and the moon are the correct sizes and the correct positions. If it's high, no eclipse. If it's low, no eclipse. But when it's exactly in the elliptic, we're going to get a solar eclipse. Maybe 
twice a year if we're lucky. You're going to be lucky on April 2024 to see the total solar eclipse. And now you know a little bit about the scale and why this is such a great phenomenon.